Coming up next from the KDB Broadcasting and Media Works Midtown Studios and the Cole Compound, this is the Eye of the Storm podcast with Kevin Derryberry and Ed Cole. The fellows talk NAIA Division I Arizona Christian University football with head coach Jeff Bowen and the Firestorm Players of the Week. Now, taking you into the eye of the storm, here is Kevin Derryberry and Ed Cole. We welcome you into the Eye of the Storm podcast. I'm Kevin Derryberry with Ed Cole from the KDB Broadcasting and Media Works Midtown Studios. Cole is at the Cole Compound. Jeff Bowen will join us here in just a moment. What a fantastic game it was this past weekend on a Saturday. As if you can imagine this, Arizona Christian University is playing football, tackle football at that in April. If you can imagine things in April, the site was set. It was 752 miles away. Wayland Baptist, Butch Henderson, the head coach. This was the second meeting uh, this season against Wayland Baptist. You took on the Pioneers. So many streaks on the line. You were unbeaten in the Sooner Athletic Conference. And you were seeking your ninth win in the post in the uh, program's first ever nine win opportunity. You took advantage of that. Uh, the list goes on and on. But coach, congratulations on the big victory. You win it forty two to seven. What's most impressive about this victory, coach? You already had your ticket punched to uh, play postseason football in the NAIA national tournament. It's the first ever. Uh, victory and opportunity for your team to play in this second season. So congratulations all across the board, but uh, most in particular, the big W over Wayland Baptist. Yeah, it was a really good game for our guys. It was uh, um, from start to finish. Couldn't have asked anymore. We executed in every phase, uh, came out strong. Um, you know, just uh, to finish up the regular season for our guys to be undefeated in the conference. We didn't want to leave any doubt, and uh, we wanted to be sharp headed heading into the playoffs. and And our guys played really, really well. I was I was uh, very pleased and impressed with the overall effort with the guys on the field. Coach, that game could have went a whole totally different way, where you could have you and your players and your staff could have went out and been kind of lackadaisical thinking, well, we've already wrapped up the sack. We've already wrapped up a playoff berth. We we're just waiting for Sunday to figure out who we're going to play. And we'll talk about that later, but you did not. We know that that is not your mindset. That is not the mindset of the ACU firestorm. You are pedal to the metal for the entire four quarters of football. And that's exactly, as you said, coach, that's what you and your players did yesterday in a dominating victory, 529 yards of total offense. Your defense holds Wayland Baptist to under 300 yards in their own building, 118, 118 yards passing. I believe that's the fourth time your defense has held an opposing uh, offense's passing game to 120 yards or less. Yeah, you know, uh, one of our core values is RNME. Right now means everything. And our guys just really had a nice focus on the day. They, they seemed very relaxed before the game. It actually kind of worried me a little bit, but they were, uh, they were locked in and, and defensively we played well. Uh, coach Sewell and the defensive guys, coach, uh, you know, Cart, coach Alfred and, and coach Williamson, uh, coach Harris, coach Elton, they, and coach Cochran, they do a great job on the defensive side of the ball. Um, yeah, I mean, and I think about 70 or 80 of their total yards came on the last drive when we cleared the bench. So um, defensively, it was it was a really solid effort. And what I really liked was the way our offense came out. We just popped them real fast. Three, three touchdowns on our first three drives, I think it was. Um, just executing really well in the run game, the passing game. Shea had a nice night. Guys were contributing uh, both the, in the run game and the passing game. And uh, – you know, it was just one of those games where you're, 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 you enjoy just you're, – you're a spectator. You know, you're, you're calling stuff. The guys are executing, and, and it's just it's, – uh, it's easy, you know, and the guys just played really well. Coach, I want to throw this thing in reverse just a bit here. Uh, a lot of accolades to pass around this past weekend, a superlative performance by your football team. But let's, let's go back to where it all starts. This game was won 
in the trenches on both sides of the football. I, I thought the line play on the defense was extraordinary. And clearly, Shea Morales had a 300-yard pass in the game. <clears throat> One game got going. He had some nice balance in there with Aiden Quinn. He got loose for nearly 80 yards, another touchdown for him. And, it, again, it was that line play. Kelly McPeck, uh, the guys up front just got things done. It was down and dirty in the trenches, Coach. I thought uh, those guys won and lost that game right there up front on both sides of the ball. Game's always one up front. I know everyone talks about, you know, we got the sixth rated passing team in the country and how we're doing that with a, a guy who was a backup quarterback at the start of the season, this, that, and the other. And it always starts up front. It always will for me. You, you win games with your big boys up front on both sides of the ball. And the offensive line played outstanding football on Saturday. And then the defensive line, um, Coach Sewell rolled. By the end of the game, he played, I think, 11 defensive linemen, and uh, all of them made grade. Uh, so they were just executing, playing well. You know, uh, not that we played perfect, but we, we just executed at such a high level up front. Uh, it just made the made the job easier for the rest of the guys. Coach, I love that football term you throw out right there. They all made great. We're talking about depth. 11 guys deep on that defensive line led by D coordinator Keith Sewell. If you would, just elaborate a little bit on what it means to make grade for some of our listeners and some of our first-time viewers here tonight. Well, I mean, on every play, uh, a player for us has an alignment and an assignment. And is he aligning right on the defensive line? Is he in the right gap? Is he where he's supposed to be at the snap of the ball and during the play? Uh, does he carry out the assignment if it's a blitz, if it's a stunt, you know, if it's a line movement? Uh, you know, and then when he's at the point of the tack, you can do all those things right, but when the ball's in your face, do you get him on the ground? You know, those things come into play too. You still got to make tackles. Um, so for a player to to, uh, to make grade, that means he's doing, uh, and we just, it's a, he either does it or he doesn't, and then we convert it to a percentage, and they got to be at, uh, 80% or above on the defensive line and the offensive line to, to make film grade. Well, it seems like that's working, Coach. Uh, Wayland Baptist was four for 15 on third downs from a defensive standpoint. It, it stacked up. And in the red zone, I know you preach the importance of scoring in the red zone. Yesterday, your offense was three of four, scored 21 points in the red zone. So from it, from a production standpoint, both sides of the ball got it done, as well as special teams with Nestor Higuera hitting all six of his extra points. You know, and, and that's really what it was. It's not like Wayland Baptist – is a bad football team. People look at the score and go, well, Wayland Baptist isn't very good, but just the opposite. Um, you know, our guys have improved so much from the fall. Uh, they had us down 28 to 21 in the fall, and we, we got a late touchdown and then ended up beating them in overtime. Uh, but we just dropped the hammer on them from the start. You know, they moved the ball, and then our, our defense got a turnover. We went in and scored. They drove, they drove the ball. They had the ball once. On, on our half yard line and our defense got them stopped. And then we flipped it around the offense and went 99 and a half yards and scored. So things like that, that's just when you're, I don't believe in luck. You know, I believe, I, I believe in faith. I believe that uh, Jesus has a plan for everything that we do and he gives us opportunities. Uh, so, so creating those opportunities on the field and then following through on them is just, just part of the plan. You know, it's what you do on a daily basis. And then you go out on the field on Saturday and you just execute. That's, that's really what it comes down to. There's no magic in it. It's doing the ordinary things exceptionally well, still in the line from Chuck Knoll there. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Chuck that's Knoll, right there. Four time Super Bowl champion, uh, the late great Chuck Knoll for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, coach, you know, um, you, you simplify. You, you're so humble. You make things seem uh, so easy. But uh, that was a tall task to, to go on the road again, to keep uh, the order uh, restored with, for your football team, to keep the eye on the prize. Uh, again, it was such an easy trap game, as Eddie alluded to. But you took care of business. And uh, your quarterback boy, Shea Morales, thrust into the uh, to the line of fire uh, a few games back. And boy, has he really answered the challenge. There are so many things that go into strong quarterback play, but he's got to get better each week, uh, whether it's uh, in the film room, <coughs> whether it's in the weight room, uh, just uh, becoming a better leader, That which, again, he had to uh, to grow up uh, on the position. And he's done an admirable job. What are some of the conversations like you've had with Shea during this developmental process 
as well as uh, what are some conversations like with Coach Kreck as you watch this young man develop, the young man from San Diego, California. He has just been so impressive. And I'm sure Tyler Duncan has uh, has been involved in his development as well. Well, first of all, Shea has done a, a, an outstanding job. Uh, in the quarterback room, the first conversation I have with them, um, they understand that um, – there's only one set of keys to the car and I'm going to hand it to somebody uh, to drive this offense. And um, there's a lot of things you got to do to, to, to get that. And it's not, and none of it has to do with just showing up and playing on Saturday. It has everything to do with your preparation, both mentally and physically and how you can lead your, your team. Does your team believe in you? Uh, and that's a huge part of being a quarterback and Shea was thrown into it. And obviously he has responded well, um, like I said, I think we're the sixth rated passing team in the country. Um, you know, some, uh, a little, about half of those numbers are, are Tyler's and, and then the, uh, a little more than half of it is Shea and, and he's stepped in and done uh, more than an admirable job. He's, he, uh, I mean, he, he may be worthy of uh, all conference honors coming up here. So, so he's done a great job. Coach Crook has really molded him into, um, you know, kind of what we need. Uh, he has his own skill set, which is different than Tyler's. So we had to, you know, when, when Tyler went down, we got through the Langston game and then we had to tweak some things and um, to make the offense fit what Shea's strengths are and, and just little things, but they've made a difference. Kevin, we got some extra special guests alongside with Coach Bowen. Did you want me to bring in, in the Dean brothers? They are ready to go. All right, let's do it. Bring them in. All right, here we go. How about it, ladies and gentlemen? The pride of Westview High, Deonce and Desmond Dean joining the program. Welcome in, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. Hey, Desmond. Hey, Deonce. How you doing, guys? Good, good. Hey, go ahead. You kick off the questioning, buddy. Uh, Deonce, you got to unmute yourself. There you go. <laughs> Deonce, how you doing, brother? <laughs> Pretty good, and you? Good, good, good. Congratulations, guys, on that great win yesterday at Wayland Baptist, 42-7. to We talked with Coach Bowen. You held, the, you held their offense to under 300 yards in their own building, and there was no slack. There was no let up. There was no way of thinking, okay, um, we're just going to rest on our laurels. We, we've got the sack division wrapped up. We've got a playoff berth. But, no, your offense went out strong. Your defense, you, you guys, you two brothers and the rest of your other brothers, went out and played so strong, strong football wise yesterday and special teams. Just talk about just getting that victory yesterday to wrap up the regular season and that, how that will propel you into next Saturday's playoff game. I guess you, Deontay, if you want to start off and then Des, you can pick up after that. Well, for, for me, it's just the, the amount of competition we have. We don't, we don't go out. We didn't go out there cocky and was like, Oh, we're, we're eight and one. We can roll these people. We went out there like, all right, let's get it better. I challenge you to, to outbeat me, get more tackles than me, get more sacks than me. I challenge you to do those plays. That's that's honestly what, as a D-line, that's what we do game to game. We challenge each other. <clears throat> and uh, the piggyback just off Deontay, uh, I encourage the whole team in the locker room to just step up and just play as one. Because we felt, we felt a little off at the beginning, and I, I addressed the room. And after I addressed the room, it just everything just felt like, like we we're ready. So as soon as we hit the field, it was just like we played lights out. Like that was probably one of our best games, personally, I think, that we played. Because like in the fall, they had us in the fall. They really had us in the fall. And I kept telling the guys, like, I don't want them to come out and think that they were gonna have us this time. I want them to, to feel what other teams felt this second half of the season. Like I'm 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 really proud of uh I'm really proud of the team on how we, we uh we pick things up this second half of the season. Desmond, Deontay, let's let's call it what it is. I'll, I'll I'll talk the trash right here. You guys went to Plainview, Texas, and opened up a can. I mean, that was that was a can. You guys, you whooped them pretty good. Domination. You uh, you learned from that experience in that thirty-one twenty-eight overtime win uh, in our place. But uh, to be able to go up there. And respond to that challenge on the road. Impressive. And you remain unbeaten on the road during the season. That's impressive as well. I think it's you know, 5 0 now uh, on the road, undefeated in the Sooner Athletic Conference, as Coach mentioned that early in the program. But when you look at uh, playing 
on that defensive line. A lot of weapons over there. We're going to talk about some weapons on the offensive side, but we don't talk about the weapons, the dudes on that front four. And you guys obviously anchor that that defensive line. What's it like playing football for not only Coach Bowen, but for also playing uh, for Coach Keith Sewell? We don't give Coach Sewell enough love on the Eye of the Storm podcast, but uh, I always enjoy my conversations with Coach Sewell uh, at halftime when we were at Shadow Mountain uh, and other uh, venues that we've been at where we had a chance to get to Coach Sewell. But uh, he is a, a lightning bolt of energy, and I can't imagine what it would be like to play for him. Uh, honestly, it, I think it's real fun to play for him because he's the guy that's upstairs, so he sees everything. And he gives us great feedback on what should, what we should be doing to make sure they're not trying to run the ball down our throat or get off the ball uh, better, how to defeat down blocks. So he plays like he plays a big role in our defense other than just sitting up, up there in the booth because he, he observes every group at practice. He goes from group to group and see what we need to work on specifically. So he plays a big role in it. Yeah, yeah Dad, what do you thought? Des summed it up, you know, the basics. He he gives us he gives us light, like he said. He sees everything, he tells us what we're doing wrong. He just say what we can do better. So Des really just summed everything up. Coach Bowen, for you, having Deontay and Desmond, the two brothers here, they they set the tone defensively. They set everything defensively for the ACU Firestorm. What does it what does it mean for you to have these two young men here in your program? And they are absolutely dominating. They're producing, and they're they're two they're two model citizens, and they 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 lead by example. Well, I mean, the reality is they they've been with me at some form or fashion since they were fourteen years old. You know, when I was the coach at Westview and, the, you know, they know where I'm at. They know I love them. They know I care about everything about them. Um, but they also know that I have a, a standard and a way of certain way of doing things. And, and I mean, that's not going to just like any family. We're going to butt heads on occasion. But but it all comes down to, um, you know, them responding to the coaching staff. And they've always been coachable guys that are going to give you 100 percent. And they're passionate about what they do and they love the game. And that's what makes them good football players is they have a love for the game. Um, I mean, every player wants to have stats and, and all those kind of accolades and stuff. But if you really, truly love the game, you love your teammates, you, you just love going out there and playing the game. And I think that's what makes them both special. And they've, they've been that way since they were uh, young men for me back in, back in the Westview days. Gentlemen, I'd like to know um... – What's your favorite thing to do on the football field? Is it is it getting that quarterback sack? Is it a tackle behind the line of scrimmage, the TFL, if you will? Is it a big run stuff? You'd like to get a pass breakup, maybe a batted line, a, 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 bat, a ball down at the line of scrimmage. What is your favorite thing to do? Uh, besides, I know you guys are thinking the same way. Maybe you want to all Jerron Green it, pick six. That we don't have that kind of athletic ability. So for you guys, what's your favorite thing to do on the football field? Uh, personally, mine is <laughs> mine defeating the double team and uh, getting a tackle for loss <laughs> because I'm only right now I'm only 250 and once I'm like I'm able to defeat a double team and realize like the dudes I'm going against are like 300 pound plus and I'm defeating it like it just it literally brings my game to a whole another level like it turns me up like it keep like it just keeps adding fuel to the fire over and over and over so that's that's personally what I like to do. I like it. I like it. I like the challenge. Mine's a little bit similar, but a little bit different. I like doing all of it, like just running around, be able to make tackles. And then you see me out there only like 5'11", going against these five, uh, six, five, three thirty people, and I'm just breathing by, doing what I do best, making tackles and making plays. To me, just being able to run around and make these plays and then sit down and watch the film and be like, yeah, I, I did that. Like, it, it shows that. I'm not only capable of playing all D line. I'm, I'm an athlete, so that that puts me in a good position. If if I do get scouts or whatever, I could just be like, yeah, I'm I'm here. Even on special teams, I'm here. I just I just love just going out there and giving them my all and improving people. Like, oh, he's he's small. I I'm gonna beat him because he's he's smaller than me. And just proving them wrong. That's that's my power. Just proving people wrong and be able to handle my job, and help my team win. Ooh. Oh, and by the way, I also play special teams if you need someone to tackle people on a, on a big-time play. Right. 
Yes, sir. Well, well, they they both play special teams, you know, and okay, that's a big do. thing. That's a big thing with us, and our guys know how I feel about special teams. I mean, you watch the best teams in the country; their best players play some form or fashion on special teams. They don't complain about it. They they thrive in it. They 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 want to excel in it. And and both the guys do an excellent job on our special teams. So uh, you know they're 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 not just they're not selfish. You know they're about the team, and they've always been that way. Gentlemen, of course, we have some video. We've got video of, of Desmond and and Deontay doing some doing some damage here. So let's go ahead and roll this tape, and then uh, Desmond and, and Deontay, you guys break this play down. It, it was against uh, Langston uh, back in February. Back in February. So let's go ahead and roll this tape here. This is Randall. Nowhere to go, and finally he's going to go down, and he's going to get sacked again. That's the third sack of the ball game, and this time it's Desmond Dean there to answer the call. And if they want to start to double-team Deontay, that's going to free somebody up. And, and Desmond, that time, the byproduct of that extra work on his brother. And uh, what does brotherly love do for you right there, huh? Exactly, yes. So it, you account for one brother, but then another brother just comes and destroys you from the entire from the opposite side of the field. That is just outstanding and sound team defense right there for the Firestorm. Wow, just just monsters, Deontay and Desmond. Just just talk about just playing together as brothers, like on, on a play like that when you're so disruptive against Langston and just just uh, just wreaking havoc from a defensive standpoint. Uh, from from my point of view, it's it's like just having me out there, another me. You know what I'm saying? And it's also just <laughs> like not only just it's also the whole the whole D line. But just, just him and, and individually, it's just like we always competition. You know, growing up, we always got to be better than our brother. But when it when it's the chance to show, like I pointed at him, I was like, that's the man. That's the man right there. Like, don't don't worry about me. You better watch him because he'll get you. So that's, that, that's my whole objective is, is to outdo him. If I can outdo him, then, then I guess I won that game because the next game I know he go outshine me or try to outshine me. So we're constantly always in competition. You know, I yeah, love that we talk about right there. Go ahead. Go ahead, Des. Uh before before every game, we're talk we're both talking about how uh how we feel and then we'll pray about playing free. And the, the, we constantly tell ourselves that before every game, I'll be like, bro, play free today. Pray free. If there's play free, don't don't play for stats, it's just play free today. And majority of the time it'll come down to uh one of us performing higher than the other, and like we just give both of each other glory and give God glory every time. But it's fun to compete with your little brother. I don't compete with your brother in general. Like it, it, we strive for it, and we laugh. We laugh about it at the end of the game. Have you guys taken a look at your numbers? Uh, you again, uh, you kind of all have that uh, mark of your head coach, very humble, and. Uh, uh, Coach B uh, has been there before, so uh, the numbers are celebrated after uh, the W's are accumulated during the season, and yeah, you, you reach those goals. But your guys' numbers are really, really like eerily similar. You're within like a, a half sack from one another, uh, within a couple tackles from each other. If you didn't know you were you were not competing, or maybe you are just a little bit, uh, again, it's just it's really interesting to see how close your numbers are in the grand scheme of things. Uh, we, well, here we usually look at numbers no. sometimes, and but we we like we try not to do the number game too much because we we play this game for more than just like for numbers. Well, we play honestly, we play to like to glorify God in every like aspect because like we tell each other we 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 honestly shouldn't be here right now, and that's the main thing we just play for is like playing for God, and it feels good. Like we look at the stats at the end of the game, of course, and we're like. Like damn, bro! Like you, you could have got more. You could have got more. You could have did this, but playing for stats is just like we stop. We stopped doing that probably like two or three years ago. We just play. We just play the game just to have fun. You got something, Deontay? Well, yeah, like what he said. But like there was a uh, one time I had twenty four tackles and everybody had like thirty plus, and I told him about it. I was like, look. I got 24. You guys are running around like 30, about to touch 40. So that Langston game, when I got like 11 or 12 tackles, 
oh, I was just, I was like, I got to beat him. Oh, oh, he got a tackle. I got to get two. I got to get two. I got. <laughs> Coach Bowen, that's what we call healthy competition, right? It's it's all it's all about competing and and we're not we we try not to be scoreboard watchers and, and stat watchers. Um, the bottom line is the, if if you're doing it right and your team's and your team's having success, you're going to get the accolades as an individual player. I mean that that's just the reality of it. And the best players, uh, you know, not I mean, it's not a hundred percent rule, but the best players are usually on the best team, and there's a reason why they're. They're that way because they're succeeding as a team on the field. And our guys are, have done that at a high level this year. And and uh, to play for each other and and enjoy the game, and like they're saying, play free and and, uh, and, and just enjoy the moment. Because uh, when it's all said and done, they're not going to put your stats on your tombstone. That's right. Desmond, I'll ask you this one, and then Deontay, you can follow this up. What does it mean for you to be a member of the Firestorm, to have a season that you had this year, 9-1, undefeated, you win the SAC Conference, you are heading to the playoffs next Saturday, you're going to go to West Palm Beach, Florida, and take on a, a very tough opponent. We'll talk about that in a couple minutes. But for you, Desmond, first, and then you, Deontay, what does it mean to be where you are right now with everything uh, we'll get Desmond back, but Deontay, for you, with everything that you've had to go through, the entire team has to go th- had to go through with the pandemic and the start and stop of the season. But for you to be here, you win six straight as a, an organization. You win, you're nine and one, and you head into the playoffs. What does it mean for you to be a part of this? It it means a lot. Like it's it's so exciting because where we came from. Like last year, we were we were trying to build this team, this team right here with when everyone buys in and believes in each other. <clears throat> Last year, we, we kind of had that, but we didn't fully have that. This year coming in, we were we were just clueless as everyone else. We didn't know how the season was going to go. We heard about we're going to have fall games and then spring games. But Coach Bowen kept us all together. It was like, hey, this was the game plan. This was going to happen. And we have to win these games in order to even get a shot at the playoff. And then, they come in conference, and conference play come, just best believe everyone's going to be on the high horse and they're going to they're gonna come for you. And we just – we settled in. We bought in. We had we have rough days at practice. Everyone does. Some days we don't want to be there. Some days we want to be there. We all just took that and just fueled us to motivate us and be like, hey, we can actually do this. Like, we're, we're really out here grinding hard, and I see you trying, and let's just – let's make something of it. And then the big aspect for me is I'm, I'm a junior. I want the seniors to be able to look back and be like, hey, we did this. We, we, we get – I want them to be able to tell their kids what went on at ACU. Great stuff, Deontay. Uh, and I got a couple more. We'll go rapid fire on these. Uh, just two more for the fellas. Uh, for Desmond, I see that uh, film of you getting that sack uh, against Langston a, a, a couple weeks back. And I just see big number 95 right there, man. I just get pumped up uh, watching that that film there. But I'm curious, how did you select 95? And then Deontay, how did you end up with number 46? Go ahead, Des. Uh, so that's the beginning of the season. Uh, at the beginning of the season last year, I was number 91. But the jersey was fitting me a little too big. <laughs> so I um I had disregarded the jersey and I was like, I was like, man, I'm not feeling the jersey. Oh, we lost him. Oh. This Deontay, is the it's on you, brother. <laughs> All right. For uh for me, 46 was is, is basically my life. It's me. 46 is me. So I've been 46 since I was I started playing football. And I it was literally the first jersey I ever got. And then I I just made it run with it. I said uh this is not it's not going to be like my ide- identity, but they're going to know who 46 is. So I just went out and just hey, everywhere I went, 46, 46, 46. So they'll know like oh, some people are like why would you pick 46? That's me. Like I I, I I don't want to change numbers over time because it feels like I'm giving up on, on a certain part of me, you know, a certain part of the dream. So I'm like, 46 is me. Love it, man. Absolutely love it. DC, I had another one in there, but uh, we'll wait for Des. We'll see if Des can uh, well, we might as well roll. We might as well roll into playoff talk, Kevin. 
Right on, gentlemen. We have some Kaiser. some big news today. Kaiser, you draw an undefeated team. They're seven zero. Ed mentioned it out of West Palm Beach, as uh, uh, Coach Bowen and we all discussed just before the uh, the broadcast that I uh, Coach mentioned that the uh, uh, the committee got together and said, "Hey, uh, let's find the two furthest points here and get these two teams together and have them play some tackle football." This time we'll go to the East Coast. So, fellas, uh, it's now it's all about uh, booking uh, reservations and reserving some time to travel east. Des, welcome back. Man, I don't know what's going on with my phone. It just, I it keeps logging me off for some reason. What do you got? Yeah, CenturyLink. <laughs> nah, I, I, it does, it I'm just pops. giving you a bad time, man, because they, <laughs> they're like. They gave everybody a lot of grief. Hey, do you want to give us a drive-through version of why you were ninety-five? Yes. Uh, so I had picked ninety-five because, like I was saying before, ninety-one was such a big number. Like it was a big jersey on me, and I was just like, "Dang, man, what I, what number can I get?" And I was just like going down the list and looking at the number, yeah! the, the jersey sizes on the the numbers, and I was just like, hey, "I'm gonna go ahead and get this ninety-five." Because it just and my best friend five was here was here, and got the flowers, and I was like, "All right, I'm playing ninety five. Like, forget it. I'm just grab it, and then and they just stuck with me in this. Because at first in high school I was fifty six, because the Oscar was forty six, and I was like, I just go uh, a digit higher than him, and I, I was sticking with that for a little, and like it was just like I, I, I got to the point where I was like, I was like, that's a lot. I love it. Yeah, that's good. I'm not even a big man. I'm a big man. So let's get a big guy's yeah. number. So. That's what I had with the 91 because I played defensive end. And then now I'm at 95. Like, I, I think 95 really looks good on me, too. So. Yes, it does. 95 wears you well, brother Desmond. It surely does. <laughs> but, Coach, it's been a busy day for you, obviously. You and you and, you and the team, you find out that you're going to go to West Palm Beach, Florida to play Seahawks fast football against Kaiser, who likes to play Seahawks yeah. fast football. This is a team that they love to run the ball. They average 252 yeah. yards rushing per game. They love to run the ball. They've got a really good defense, and it's in, in their building, in a brand-new building. It's only three years old. But, Coach, have you had any time to really watch anything on Kaiser? I know everything's been crazy with everything logistically, trying to get your team set to go cross-country to play Kaiser on Saturday afternoon. But w w do you know anything about Kaiser? Have you begun to break down film on them or anything? Oh, yeah. The staff's already working on that. I'm doing my my stuff that I got to do as, as the head coach and all that kind of fun stuff. But I've still peeked at them on some film already, so I couldn't uh, couldn't avoid them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they're they're a good football team, obviously. They're they're – they're seated high and they, they were undefeated. And, um, you know, I, I know they played in the fall. So, I mean, this is the crazy year, fall, spring, both fall and spring. So those kind of things are coming, going to come into play with, with a bunch of teams in the, in the playoffs. But for, for us, it's just uh, getting ready for another really good opponent. And, and um, we'll be, we'll be ready, you know, we'll be ready for them and they're, they're going to be ready for us. So, Let's just get it on, you know, have some fun with it and work hard and uh, and let the chips fall. You're watching the Eye of the Storm podcast. We're talking ACU football up from 14 to number 12 in the country. And we're talking about Kaiser and West Palm Beach. That's who the Firestorm draw in the opening round of the national championship tournament. Of course, it all culminates in early May at Eddie Robinson Stadium in Louisiana. That is the destination. Coach, it's been a fantastic year. Um, I wanted to ask one final question to the fellas, and we'll le just leave it up for Deontay, and that's just how have they embraced the newcomers like Maurice Powell and guys like that? Again, this defensive line, to go with your linebacking core, we don't want to leave anybody out. The entire unit has been absolutely extraordinary, as we mentioned early on. But uh, if you would, just uh, mention uh, what it's been like to embrace these newcomers and how just uh, quickly they fit in. I got Dez right here. He, he lagged out. I don't know if you guys hear him. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we got you, Dez. Yeah. Yeah, uh, with uh, with Mo, I love playing next to him, but I already knew he was gonna be. I, I knew he was gonna be that guy just based on how he was uh, practicing last last ball. He was practicing really good. I'm like, dude, like this this is a guy we gotta really watch out for. So we got to the point where we was like, 
man, we, I can't wait to play next to him. And once I we broke that first game to play next to him, like I really I love it. I love it. I'm like, bro, you're a dog. Like I like that. Like your mentality is different, bro. And like he, the thing about him, he plays so like he plays he's free. Like he can play free. He does like I haven't heard him complain about practice, about games. He just like he plays, he just plays just for the love of the game. I can tell that football is really what he wants to do for the like for the most most of the time of his life. For me, how about you, Deontay? Just, yeah, it's I just I just feel it. Like I feel everyone out there. Like we're on the same page. Like we we played for a while. Like like that team that you grew up with, and you know they're capable of doing something. Like just being out there, going on the field. Like I have confidence in my defense. Like I hey throw throw whatever you want. I I know we gonna get the job. But I know we gonna work. Like don't throw a curveball. Throw okay. we we might we might adjust a little bit in the first half or the first first two quarter first quarter, and then once we get to, get a hang of you, it's over. It's a wrap. It's a wrap because we we're coming. We're coming. We're gonna lock it down. And as humble as as I want to be, but talking about the defense entirely, that gets me out of character because I know we have some dogs on defense. If they're not starting, mm-hmm. they're on the sideline waiting to get in. They waiting for the Kindles to be open so they can do what they do. So I, I, I know I'm okay. When I come out for a breather or two, I know the guy right behind me capable of doing what I can do. So I, there's no biggie. Like, I don't, I don't care that I'm getting less reps knowing he's getting – like, I want to win the game. And I know he does, so he's in a fight. Naheem Hoxie, whoa, man. You oh. got some boys up front, like you said, some dogs, and these guys are all on the hunt right now. There's Des. What you got, Des? I love, I love my, my he's, uh, he's young, but I know he uh, eventually he's going to be an All American. Like just the mentality he has, he still has some growing to do as a young man, but overall, he's a he's a good football player, and he, he like he so much develop. He got so much room to develop. And, I'm excited, like to see him down the road, to see him in senior season. I know he's going to be that guy for, for the Firestorm, and I'm really, I'm really excited to see where, where, how far he goes with football. Coach, how how great is it for you as a head coach to have a team that has that much depth, and even the young kids, the young puppies, the freshmen and the sophomores are stepping up and they're showing and proving that they're worthy of being on this Firestorm football team. They know they have to step their game up because everybody else is stepping their game up, so they can't lag behind because if they do, they're going to get lost in the mix. Well, competition breeds quality players, and the reality is you want – you want to be a player that plays 75 plays and you take 30 off half speed, or you want to be out there for 40 plays and get after it and be an impact player for 40. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the reality of it. You watch it at any level, college pros, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if, if you have depth, uh, it's going to give you a chance to play four quarters solid. And, uh, and as your backups develop, you know, you're, you're getting the same quality reps out of them as you get out of the starters. And so everybody – and then everybody's contributing, and that, that makes a big difference. And, and we're having that on both sides of the ball this year, uh, and that, that's been a key for our success. Deontay, which offensive lineman in practice makes you work? Who's making you better? Which one of those guys that they're all just dirty, dirty, having great years, they've all been stellar – Having stout stout competition, and they have been road grading on Saturdays. I uh, I mainly go against the tackles, so like Kale and Jesus. I th- I mainly go against Jesus. Jesus there, he's he's pretty. He's, he's a solid, he's a big guy. He he'll tell you he gets me right by like telling me what he got me on. So if I come up with a bull rush and I try to swipe, he'd be like, "Hey, you're leaning too hard. That's why I got you this way." And if I beat him, I tell him like, "Look." You're you're shooting that way. That's why I cut under you. So just chop your steps a little more. So we help each other out, and he really he really gets to me because like if I I know like I look at the other offense and I'm like if I don't see nobody like him then I'm I'm good I'm good because he, he really be giving me the work at practice. I'm I'm not gonna sit here and lie. He be really doing me bad at practice. <laughs> Coach Bowen, that is genuine um, appreciation for one another. You can't teach chemistry. Either you have it or you don't. You guys don't have to teach it. You guys have amazing team chemistry in that room. I mean, it's it's just it's real special. Well, I mean, we're 
there's so so much of it is um you know faith faith driven and just christ like love and and everyone when you when you say love and and christian and a lot of people equate that to being soft and it's everything but soft our guys have a, a true love for each other but also a true love for each other is going hey bro you're letting me down today let's get after it you know those kind of the truth and love is part of it too and and they push each other um, like I said, not, not every day is perfect. I'm going to get on them. They're not going to like it. They're going to get on each other, but Hey, brothers fight, you know, but they also make up and, uh, th then they, then they do it together. And that's what makes it special is when you can come together and, uh, and play at a high level. This, this team right now is not the same team that hit the field in the fall. And it's, and it's really, uh, so much of it is because they've grown so much in their faith and just an understanding of what it means to be Christ-like in their love with each other. Amen. Deontay, I will piggyback off of Coach Bowen, and this is the last thing I have for you. What does it mean for you to play to the man, play for the man to the left of you, to the right of you, to the man behind you? What does that mean to play for your brothers? Oh, it means everything because <clears throat> I know how it's going to feel when I'm in their shoes. Like, say if I'm next to me is a senior or there's more seniors on the field. I know how it feels to be a senior and want it, want it all for your team or, like, just want it all and you know you – some people I know some people that's not going to further their football careers. So right now means everything. So I'm going to give them everything I can so they can have pride and joy. And like I said, give it to their kids or give it to their wives or let their their coworkers know like, hey, I got this ring right here or, or I got this one. I got this one. This is what we did in this year. You know, that's what brings me happiness. And that's what fuels me just seeing my brothers get happy you know what i'm saying my senior brothers get happy like all right i'm proud of you guys like you guys are, are your joy is my joy talk about joy nestor Higuera, another tackle at least he got in on an assist this weekend was he up to five now for the five times soon athletic conference player of the week nestor Higuera, 97 <laughs> the guest of the pat mcafee That's show great. we're going yeah. national now for Nestor. Uh, that's too much fun right there. Yeah, he, right, he, he's a dog. He's a dog. All right, my last one for you, Coach. Uh, I'd be a little bit remiss if we didn't mention about those wide receivers. Not only do these dudes get it done blocking for the tailbacks that you have in a whole stable, those guys led by Aiden Quinn this weekend and, and Alex York and friends, but uh, Derek Anderson, his first two career touchdowns, uh, he got off the deck, found him, himself in the end zone not once but twice this weekend. John Cole, what is 11th career 100 yard game? Zachary Kellup, Sid Turnbull Frazier, they go Willie Cleveland, Tariq Culpepper. This wide receiving group, coach, is maybe as talented and as deep as you've ever had. Oh, without a doubt, we've had talented receivers. You know, we've had talented receivers since year one. We've always had that. and We've been able to throw the ball, you know, but as a core group, uh, we have not had a group like this. Uh, you know, it's not just four guys or two guys. We, we got six, eight guys that can roll out there every game and, and produce, and uh, they're doing it at a high level. And, uh, you know, uh, Coach Cooper, Sean Cooper has done a great job with the receivers, uh, developing them. And, uh, you know, it's just an outstanding core group, you know. Um, uh, on any given series, you can look out there and and maybe it's not John Cole making a play. Maybe it's Derek going over the top for two or Sid making some some catches and run, running hard with, with power or, you know, call-ups making, making the tough catch or turning the hitch into 12, 15 yards. They, they've all just contributed at a high level this year. And the group has the, – the, the special thing about this group is, is their overall development throughout the year to be able to get all those guys on the field at some point in time in the game. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a key for us. That's why, we're, that's why we, we are so successful throwing the football is there's a lot of weapons out there at, at any point in time. Weapons of mass destruction in some degree. Boy, it's yes. a potent, potent offense. Uh, with uh, uh, all of your quarterbacks doing a great job there. And I know Tyler Duncan has been instrumental off the field, too. We see him on the sidelines there uh, lead the charge. He's been fantastic.
Coach, I've got one more for you, and that is uh, we usually begin the show with the health of the football team and how everybody's doing. I'll close out my portion of the program with uh, how is the health of your football team? We get out unscathed, and uh, do you expect to have a full deck of cards heading into Saturday? Yeah, we got out of plain view healthy. You know, just the usual game, bumps and bruises, but, but uh, you know, nothing, nothing major. Uh, so everyone's, everyone's healthy. Um, you know, we had a couple guys out, uh, this last week for, for health reasons and stuff. And, and, um, you know, we should, should be full strength. Um, and, um, you know, everyone's banged up this time of year. We're talking about a 10 month football season. How can we not be banged up? I'm, I'm sore just watching our guys. Um, so, so to say we're not banged up a little bit, you know, but the bottom line is they're, they're going to play. They're going to play and play their tails off, and they're going to play on fire. We are the firestorm, so they're going to get after it. Um, we're not going to cry about injuries or anything like that. We, we don't – no excuses. That, that's what we do. And, and uh, so we're going to head to Florida, and we're going to be geared up, ready to go. We are excited about that, Coach. Congratulations, Coach, and Deontay and Desmond on a great season. Uh, come next Saturday, we are looking. We are excited about some playoff football as you go to face Kaiser over in West Palm Beach, Florida. We thank all three of you gentlemen for your time tonight. I know it's been a busy day with uh with the seating and everything, the information with the news coming out. But thank you guys for for taking some time with us on this busy weekend and roll storm. Roll storm. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the coverage and uh, and hopefully we're back together next Sunday talking about uh. Uh, a quality win and uh, who the next opponent is, but we're going to spend this week really focused in and locked in and, and get ready. Uh, it's, it's an exciting time for our university and our football program. Uh, you know, three, three conference championships in six years, uh, outstanding. Our first trip to the playoffs, outstanding, a, a nine and one season, best record ever. Um, so they got a lot to be proud of and, and I'm very proud of this team and, and uh, our legacy players are, are excited about it. So, uh, we are the ACU football family, so we're we're very excited about what what's going on and where we're headed. Coach, congratulations uh, uh, to all of you. And uh, what's been fantastic is you've handled those road trips as business trips, and you have done nothing but conduct business on those roadies. So uh, continued success, gentlemen, to the Deontes and the Desmond Deans of the world. Hey, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your contribution to ACU Athletics. It's been our pleasure. And uh, give a shout-out to all you fellows uh, in practice tomorrow. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you guys uh, this time next week sometime. Sir, thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you, you gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thank you, Coach. Coach Jeff Bowen. Thank you, Des. Deontay. Coach JB, Desmond, and Deontay Dean, the pride of Westview on the program. Ed, another fantastic show. Thank you, uh, as always, our technical producer for putting this one together. And uh, boy, it went quick, didn't it? It did. It's great when you're talking about a team that's 9-1 and one going to the playoffs, won the Sooner Athletic Conference, went undefeated in it, dominated yesterday in Plainview, Texas, and they are ready for Kaiser. I cannot wait for next Saturday afternoon for them for them to face off at, uh, at, at Kaiser football field. It'll be artificial turf, but it'll be a, a great fun game. And we'll, we'll see what happens. And as, as coach said, they'll be ready to go. They'll get some great practices, get on the plane, go cross country and represent the firestorm represent the firestorm community. Kaiser won the mid South. It was the sun division. They've got three divisions there and Kaiser are the number four team in the country at seven and O oh, they will be prepared to take on ACU ACU making their first ever trip to the national championship and for Kaiser, this will be their second stint. They went back uh, just a year ago, 2019, and they mm -hmm. lost uh, in that first round. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a dandy, as we like to say. We will, uh, we'll, we'll find out what kind of coverage we can provide. We're still optimistic. We're going to jump on a bird and head over with the fellas. But uh, you got to think that way, right? Be of course. Part, that'd be, yeah, it'd be part. great to It'd be great to jump on the charter and you know we we go with the team and we do the broadcast. That'd be I mean it's it's a historic uh, event for ACU for the Firestorm to make the playoffs. It'd be great if if we could go along and broadcast that and be a part of the the Firestorm family because we're the the, the broadcasters. It'd be great. But if not, we'll we'll find some way of, to, of getting some coverage. But you know if not, it's been a great season so far and we will root on the Firestorm wherever we are.
If not now, I mean, when, right? I mean, yes. let's do this. Let's do it. Hey, yep. uh, special shout out to special teamers, Nathan Peterson and Riley Tucker. Tremendous support from those guys. And, uh, and as you mentioned, uh, Derek Anderson, what a breakout performance for DA. He was standout. And man, John Cole, he was like blur esque, right? He was, you talk about Linda Ronstant, a little blue by you. It was just, he torched the secondary to John Cole. Shea Morales just absolutely sliced and diced that entire afternoon in plain view. And Kevin, this is the second consecutive year in plain view that John Cole has destroyed w- Wayland Baptist. Last year, he had six catches for 159 yards and a touchdown. Yesterday, he had nine catches for 154 and a touchdown. So, over the last two years, he is absolutely. <laughs> terrified and terrorized Wayland Baptist in their own building. You might want to put a hat on seven, right? You might want to check seven. Uh, yeah. At some point. But and you, you might want to check 19 and 13 and three and nine and four and 24 and 88. Every number up and down this roster that's either a wide receiver or a tight end or a running back. Check everybody. True. True that. That is absolutely well stated because you look and see. If you want to go Bill Belichick and you want to take John Cole out of the equation, watch out. Sid Turnbull Frazier, Zach Kellop, Willie Cleveland in the slot. Those guys will eat you alive. Yes. Great quarterback play again. By the way, James Duncan got a touchdown pass. Yes, and he did. And that was to, uh, to, to, uh, to DA. So uh, nice job there um, by ACU. And also, how how solid was Jalen Jefferson yesterday? Seven rushes. He had 47 yards rushing to to back up Aiden Quinn. Alex York had nine rushes for 28 yards. So, And then Shea Morales had the nine rushes for 20 yards. And he had a rushing touchdown to go along with the three touchdowns he threw. So he accounted for four touchdowns yesterday for, for ACU. Shea Morales continues to grow right in front of our very eyes, Kevin. It's amazing what this young man has had to go through with Tyler Duncan's injury. And he was thrust into it. In that, in that Langston game, I believe. So he was thrust into this starting quarterback position, and he's embraced it firmly. Of course, he had his struggles in the first game, but he has ironed this thing out. Every Everything is kind of coming together for him, and th- this is just so exciting that this football team is headed to the playoffs, and you got to give, as Coach said, give Sean Cooper credit, the passing game coordinator and the wide receiver coach, for bringing – Shea Morales along and keeping him calm, knowing this is a, a, a tricky and a tough situation for him. But Sean Cooper is that calming influence in the locker room that guided Shea Morales to where he is right now. And Coach Crack, too. Steph Crack has oh, yeah. really been uh, absolutely dynamic in that yes. leadership role uh, with that duo right there of Coach Coop, Coach Crack. Uh, Coach Unreal. Crack. Oh, yes. So those guys, uh, JB's got a great staff. Yeah. And, uh, and, Johnny and, and that's. Help put that staff together. Uh, mm-hmm. and now, Coach Bowen just put his uh, he's put his stamp on it and and tweak things for him. And we talked about Brett Nelson for just a second. What a great job Brett Nelson has done, as he used to do administrative duties and game day ops. Now he's coached the football team and he's got one whale of an offensive line, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's got a great line, and and Coach Harris, the defensive line special teams coach, does he not have a great defensive line as well, along with Todd Williamson, the effect, assistant defensive coordinator, and the outside linebackers coach? Does every one of these coaches not have a, a, a just infinite talent at their disposal? Yeah. We'd like to say an embarrassment of riches. Embarrassment of riches, old. yes. Alex York. Another dude, right? Aiden Quinn, big time game for him. Leads the team in rushing. Who would have thought that going into this season? Uh, All time uh, scoring leader uh, when it comes to rushing touchdowns. Aiden Quinn, phenomenal. Yeah, he's a record breaker. He has just been outstanding. Another uh, just true leader and true professional. Strong, strong dude in the room. Aaron Ward out. Um, uh, how about Tyrese Golar? He was out. And by the way, Ed, I snuck in a little. Uh, uh, a little viewing of the broadcasts for Wayland Baptist. And I just wanted to say that it is somewhat comical in many cases when they get guys' numbers confused, when they think it's Clay Brant in the fourth and it's really Tyrese Golar, or they really think it's Tyrese Golar, you're like, that's not Tyrese Golar because he's on crutches. That yes. might be Clay Brant in the fourth. But it <laughs> happens to the best of them. I just wanted to point that out, Ed Cole. Sure, it's okay, but uh, yeah, as Fan Fins says on Twitter, the future is bright for ACU. Thanks for for clocking in, Fan Fins. And uh, Nathan, you you talked about uh, Nathan. He 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 admitted this is his favorite podcast. 
So Nathan, brother, I we we appreciate you tuning in, ah. and I know you're you're excited about that trip to Florida next Saturday. He's a he's a Pat McAfee guy, though. I think he that's is. his favorite podcast. He he mentioned that. We're I told him we've got work to do in order to get to uh to get this one to be number one. Oh, I thought he favorite. said that our ours was his favorite. Oh, Pat no, McAfee is his favorite. Right? He may I, be saying that. I think it was Patty Max. I mean, let's be honest. Oh, okay. Right? He might have right. a better guest line than we do, but uh well, sure. Hey, uh say nothing about our guests here on the program. The Deans were uh, at the top of the game. I'm not sure what happened to Dez's phone, but uh, yeah, yeah my guess is either got Verizon and Apple, that combination of it. You, you know, I'm, I'm just throwing haymakers now at Apple. Who yeah, I, don't uh, do that. Don't do that. I've Verizon, got I've got Verizon and Apple. Don't do that. Verizon blows nope. me up every now and then. So just giving those guys a bad time. Oh, Start right. The checks and we'll give you nothing but praise. Uh, about that all right hey next week man it's the uh it's the idea to get to eddie g robinson stadium may 10th in grambling louisiana that is where acu wants to play tackle football and uh we'll find out what that time is and ed if we and i say we if arizona christian the number 12 team in the country if they get there we're getting on a plane or we're driving there and we will record the game on our little audio box, if that's what we got to do. We, yeah, we, we will. Yeah, if we have to drive to Grambling, Louisiana, we'll make that trip. We'll do it, and we'll see what's going on uh, in the surrounding areas and get educated. No doubt, a lot of great, a lot of great, uh, a lot of great happenings. A lot of, the, uh, a lot of great history there in Grambling. But it all starts next Saturday, Kevin, over in West Palm Beach, Florida. They've got to get past Kaiser first. It's a business trip. They yep. got to put a. One O must go, and they got to put a blemish on Kaiser's record. All right, that'll do it for the Eye of the Storm podcast for episode number four. He's Ed Cole. I'm Kevin Derryberry. Special thank you to head coach Jeff Bowen. He leads his football team to a nine and one regular season record, the most wins in program history, the best record in program history, and an undefeated season in the Sooner Athletic Conference at five and zero. Oh. And they win their first ever Sooner Athletic Conference Championship. And with that, a date in the 65th Annual Football National Championship. Go get them, Ed. Roll Storm. Roll Storm. The Eye of the Storm podcast is a production of KDB Broadcasting and Media Works and can be seen on the KDB Broadcasting and Media Works YouTube channel. Follow and watch Kevin Derryberry at KTB Voice and Ed Cole at EdCole43 on Twitter.